you almost beat me to it. I was going to ask you a question around like, how do you start to handle the scalability issue of the practitioners and the number of people that we need? Um, Cause I remember sitting in a, a presentation with Jim Carr representing the BACB talking about their expected growth rates of BCBA credential. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it looked like it was going to be one of those things where it kind of caps out around um, roughly a quarter million practitioners that have their BCBA credentials is what they're kind of expecting over something like 10 years. And it was like, hey, if you run the math and you look at the caseload and you look at the, just the prevalence rate of autism, like we're not going to meet that. <laughs> like, like you just looking at these, you know, projections. So it's, it seems, uh, so you're talking about, you know, a little in the chat, like overcoming barriers. Are there other ways around this? Like, I know you all have been focusing on some technology related things in the past. Like, where do you see the path forward to getting over these barriers? Building, one, building yeah. that bridge, right, with ABI and trying to tackle yeah. that. Like, I can see that being a significant step forward. Yeah. So, get it, when you look at the, uh, the code of federal regulation um, for what's considered evidence based. Uh, ABA doesn't meet the, the criteria, but the reality is we have the research that could meet the criteria, but we're all kind of working in our own silos that no one has pulled them together for the common benefit of, of getting the federal government or state governments to recognize our science. Um, I think we also have barriers like, you know, where does where, where do these programs sit? Are they psychology? Are they education? Is this healthcare? And we 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 of course in the um, not so not so distant past struggled with this with autism spectrum disorders, right? Should the school be the ones paying for the services or the healthcare insurance companies? So so we've got all those problems, and and I think those are attributed to the field itself and how we've. Um, I, I, I will go on record to say I think one of the biggest mistakes was when ABA walked away from the field of psychology. Yeah. We're having to fight all the battles they fought in the 70s and 80s, and they're still fighting today. And if we were still under that rubric, we would have advantages that we don't have. So we're having yeah. to sort of recreate the wheel in some ways. But um, but I do want to mention uh, someone like John Borgen, who came to a SIG meeting and decided, you know what, I want to help. I'm going to get some of my students and we're going to start scouring the lit and putting together some lit reviews to say, okay, for depression, ABA absolutely meets criteria, uh, particularly behavioral activation, uh, meets criteria according to the federal regs. For phobias, exposure therapy for specific phobias, we meet the criteria. So just want to give kudos to John and his team who are running down that uh, those studies so that hopefully when when ABAI is ready to support that we've got some um, fodder for them to be able to move forward. I also would like to extend that kudo about uh, John Borg. And, and, and Ryan, you mentioned before tech solutions. So, so going back to our Air National Guard project, one of the challenges with the paper chart is transferability, right? How do I take, if I'm doing a program outcome evaluation across and there are 90 different wings or, or think of them like bases in the Air National Guard, how do we disseminate information consistently, easily, um, um, it, with high quality? And so that was around the time where uh, Abigail and I were working with a small company called Accelerate Innovations. I can actually put the website in the chat box in a moment. But Accelerate Innovations, we, we created the first native app for the standard acceleration chart. Of course, you've got uh, Chartalytics, which is now Precision X, which has done a lot in the way of digital charting, um, particularly within other software systems. And, and so ours is the first native application. It's in um, on Apple. And so delivering those products to the leadership of the Air National Guard made it easy because essentially we're giving them high resolution JPEGs of their results, uh, which again are on the standard acceleration chart. Um, they responded think, very positively to those when we presented them at Andrews Air Force Base. Yeah, yeah, we presented them. And then a year later in Milwaukee, they invited us to come to their, the top brass of the officer and the enlisted corps to sort of look at what are we doing around suicide prevention, et cetera, et cetera. And we got to present our data to them as well. And and uh, while on one hand, they really appreciated uh the work we had done 
they it was really um, some of them did not warm up easily to the chart. Um, and so again, there's that there's that um, trying to educate the non ABA community about the importance of looking at acceleration, the importance of looking at things in a semi logarithmic scale. Heck, we we uh, Abigail and I with uh, Chris Kilbasa, who's a grad student at CSPP mm -hmm. in Chicago, we just um, published a, a paper on using the chart for analyzing COVID and why that's just more accurate. So, so on, on, so sort of in, in one way, the tech solution has to involve digital charts if we're going to push charts forward, but there's still much to be accomplished with, with regard to how we educate uh, the masses to, to just reading the chart and understanding the chart. So, so it's an ongoing challenge. And that's